Hey guys, Troy here, back with another video. Today we're doing something a little bit different than usual, and we're gonna be talking about football cards. Now, I've been seeing a lot of people coming into the hobby recently, investing in football cards and saying, well, I play fantasy football. Investing in football cards, basically the same thing. Well, I'm here to tell you guys today, they are very, very different. The first reason why it's different than fantasy football is because you cannot afford for your first round pick to get injured when it comes to sports card investing. Now, a lot of us have limited budgets, limited time, not to mention you really should be following the 80-20 rule and putting most of your resources into your star player. Now, let me just give you guys an example. And here, I promise, I'm, I'm literally knocking on wood right now. I would never wish for anyone to get injured, especially being a professional athlete myself. But for the sake of this example, I'm, I'm sorry guys, I have to do it. Now, in fantasy football, the guy I took as my first pick this year was Ezekiel Elliott. He's a stud running back, really, really good guys. And I've seen a lot of people investing in his rookie sports cards as well. Now, I, I really believe, and trust me, I'm hoping it doesn't happen, if God forbid Ezekiel Elliott goes down with an injury this year, I think my fantasy team is gonna be able to recover. I've done it before in the past, going way, way back guys, to the Sean Alexander, Maurice Jones, Drew days. It's almost commonplace in the fantasy football world that first round picks of players go down and you're pretty much without them for the rest of the season. But plenty of owners still find a way to win the championship. But guys, if you spent the majority of your money on Ezekiel Elliott rookie cards, and he goes down, that's really gonna hurt. I'm telling you his card prices will absolutely tank, especially as a running back, and you could very well end up in the red for the whole season when you're spending all your money and all your time trying to invest in football cards. Now, you could say, well, Troy, it's the same thing in basketball. What if someone in basketball gets hurt? You're right, their card prices will go down as well, but in basketball, it's different. For the, for the most part, guys, you don't see star players in basketball get hurt when they're young and in their primes and then just completely disappear. It's usually towards the tail end of their careers. Maybe someone like Dwayne Wade. When he got hurt towards the end of the career, the writing was kind of on the wall, but you know, players like him got hurt early on in their career and they still had that upward trajectory. In football, we see all the time young, talented players get hurt and they're just really never, never relevant again. Now, some of you might be saying, okay, yeah, just like fantasy football, I lose out on Zeke in my football card investing, but I'll make it up with the equivalent of a waiver wire guy, just like I do in fantasy football. Which brings me to my second reason why it's different. There is no waiver wire in sports card investing. Now, maybe if you guys believe you're just the quickest, best, smartest, sports card investor out there, maybe you will be able to find these, these football cards like right when the guy breaks out, right when he's about to have a big role and you invest and then you make some money. But you very well may miss out, especially for some of you guys who don't have all day just to be sitting on eBay. As soon as maybe that backup running back hits 80 yards replacing the injured guy, his card prices might have already doubled, in which case you'll have lost out on your investing opportunity. As opposed to in fantasy football, you can claim these guys on the waiver wire after they've already had their big game. You don't have to worry about other people sn snapping them up, because at least in most fantasy football leagues that I've been in, it's not like a instantaneous, you can just pick up guys right away. It's If they have a big game, there's a waiver wire process, and then you know whoever's in last place or whatever it is gets the player. So for me guys, looking at the, the equivalent of waiver wire guys for football card investing, it's tricky, it's tough, the timing when you get in and out, do you invest in this guy, is he the real deal or not? Which I'm sure you guys know if you actually do play fantasy football. The waiver wire is great, it helps, it can help you win leagues, but also you have to comb through a lot of, no disrespect, sorry, but garbage, trying to find one player who's actually gonna be reliable and make it. The third reason why it's different from fantasy football is because there's no reset at the end of the year. I'm sure any of you guys who have actually played fantasy football, we've all had our tough years where your roster just doesn't turn out to be what you thought it was. You might have some injuries, some guys who just don't perform. Sometimes I've seen players become irrelevant just because the coach stops throwing them the ball or 
takes the game plan focus away from them. And for me, it just really seems like like in fantasy football, the train comes off the track quickly and you're just your rosters, there's just not a lot of stuff there. But the good news is once the season's over, you have to start all over next year and get a new batch of players. Now, once again, someone might be saying, oh, no, 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 I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do quick flips. I'm going to know when to sell. I'm not going to hold on to players for a long time. And that could be true. I just think it's really hard. So a lot of you guys who are maybe putting together a list of players who you're going to invest in for the 2019 football season, it's similar to putting together a roster in fantasy football. Just how quickly in one season all these players who you thought were going to be so good have just horrible seasons and get injured or whatever it is, that's tough. And it really is different in, in football, guys. Basketball is hard. It's not e easy to predict, but it's different. You're not going to have a whole fantasy basketball team, and then at the end of the season, you're going to be like, well, those guys all suck. And honestly, unfortunately, I've had that experience plenty of times in fantasy football. I'm seeing articles and people posting about investing in guys like Will Fuller. Now, I'm not going to sit here and pretend to be some sort of pro football analyst. I have no idea how Will Fuller is going to do this year. But I just know from my years of watching football, there has been a, a thousand Will Fullers who in a short time span, maybe a couple months or, or a year, just totally fade into obscurity. And fantasy football, that's okay. But if you're pouring real money into their cards, I really think there's a scenario where you could invest $100 and that card goes all the way down to five in the matter of a season. Now, once again, guys, I'm gonna emphasize that every single video, buy what you like. If you enjoy football, by all means, buy football cards. But I just think that if you're going into it with the mindset of, oh, I'm good at fantasy football, I'll be good at football card investing, just know that it's not the same. And it's also different from other sports like basketball as well, which you know maybe a lot of my viewers are coming from. All right, guys, that's it for the video. Uh, thank you guys for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe. I'm gonna keep the videos coming. Thanks again.